So I think every mother's son is interested to know when is the bottom for Chinese tech, myself included by the way. So in one of my latest video, I actually hinted that I think we are kind of bottoming out for Chinese stocks. Investors tend to forget that they are still currently managing the second largest economy of the world with expectations from 1.4 billion people. So what about the upside from policy easing and maybe even a potential economic stimulus? Are we forgetting something? At least for now, it does seem like many investors have already thrown in the towel and decided to abandon this Chinese ship in totality. So I haven't been calling for the bottom for Chinese tech, but given the rate at which I see investors capitulating, I really think that we are already in the process of bottoming out. Immediately, a friend of mine dropped me a WhatsApp. Good luck, have fun. Of course, I know that even attempting to call the bottom is a foolish attempt, especially in the public domain, where everything you say will be used against you even 10 years later, even though we are not in a court of law. But heck man, this is my channel, so I do whatever I want to. So if you have to go to my YouTube channel and search the keyword bottom under the video section, you can actually find a video from a year ago with the title, why I think Alibaba haven't bottom. Fortunately, I didn't call for the bottom so early on, but we shall see if I have the foresight of God this time around. So I've also recently written a Substack article on this topic of bottoming. So for those of you who are still not subscribed to my Substack list, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. It's completely free. Link is in the description. I'm almost done with my finals for this semester, and I hope to churn out more content on my other socials as well. Feel free to follow me on Substack, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Just treat it as a way to boost my ego, so that in future, when I meet someone for the first time, and when they search out my socials, I can feel a little bit better about myself. Oh, and don't forget to help smash that cute little like button when you scroll down for the links. This is crazy. WeBull just extended their latest sign-up reward and it has never been better. So you can get up to 150 US dollar cash voucher if you fund and trade your WeBull account today. So all you have to do is to sign up for a new account with the link below and deposit at least 2,000 Singapore dollars and execute one buy trade for a stock or ETF and one option. And that's a whooping 10.5% ROI on your initial capital. So for those of you who have been sitting on the sidelines for some time now, I think this is the sign to get yourself motivated. So WeBull prides itself on zero commission trading. So let's stop paying commissions and use them to buy more Alibaba. So if you need another reason to sign up for WeBull today, they are also giving out attractive referral rewards if you get your friends to sign up using your own referral code. But of course, you should do so with mine first. Wink, wink. Don't let this 10.5% ROI slip away so easily. Link will be in the description. Thank you Weibo for sponsoring this video. Now, let's be real. It has been a treacherous journey for Chinese tech investors over the last two years. So I'm speculating that many of you who were even remotely interested in Chinese tech in the first place was because of the insanely cheap valuation and how far it has fallen compared to its past glory. At its peak, Alibaba was trading at $310 on the New York Stock Exchange and the lowest it closed was around $63 per ADR with an intraday low of around $58. That's an 80% drawdown. Similarly, Tencent experienced a 74% decline from 757 to 200 Hong Kong dollars from peak to trove. So we are talking about two of the biggest publicly listed Chinese companies, by the way, not some mum and pop shop that is laden with fraudulent claims like Luckin Coffee. So let me attempt to make the case on why I think we have kind of hit the bottom for Chinese tech. So that's it. Just know that I'm a huge Baba and Tencent bull. So yes, my views will probably be biased. So let's start with understanding what could have potentially triggered this huge sell down. So many investors like to attribute it to Jack Ma's fury speech that caused Chairman C to rein in the tech sector. But personally, I beg to differ. So it's really hard to prove the intention because Chairman C is not in the hot seat today. But let's just try to discuss the different implications. So over the two year long crackdown, there were many shady practices that came to light from anti-competition to unwarranted systemic risk, to exploitation of workers, 
and even ridiculous algorithms that treats consumers unfairly. So did they really regulate the industry because of quote-unquote personal reasons as purported by mainstream media just because China wants control? Or was it just long overdue? I think we won't have a simple answer. On top of the tech crackdown, the Chinese economy was also experiencing several serious headwinds, like the unraveling of the property sector that initiated second and third order impacts on the economy. So at the start of this year, China actually guided for a 5.5% growth target. And today, the street consensus has it at around 3.2%, according to a Reuters poll. So not only is growth sluggish, but recent unemployment figures also paints a horrendous picture. So in July, youth unemployment reached 19.9%, the highest rate ever since they started publishing the index in Jan of 2018, when the rate was as low as 9.6%. That's a 2x. There were a myriad of factors behind this lackluster performance. First, the continued unraveling of the property sector. So as more people deleverage, the velocity of money is reduced via the multiplier effect. And since the property sector boasted most of China's growth over the last decade, I think it makes up around 30% of the declared GDP. So stakeholders, both upstream and downstream, are impacted disproportionately, bringing the entire ecosystem down together with them. Second, the pandemic strategy still serves as a huge challenge that disrupts not only the supply chain and also the functioning of normal business activities. Third, the current monetary and fiscal policy actions are clearly insufficient to boost consumer and also business confidence in China today. Fourth, weakening global demand from every major continent as they are faced with their own set of domestic problems exacerbated the fall in demand for exports. And last but not least, fifth, the vote of no confidence from international investors right after the 20th Party Congress, as Chairman Xi basically has China under his control with a cabinet of loyalists and the Politburo. So these factors are compounding in nature, by the way. When things start to look bleak, it will probably become worse after a while. Now, my baseline argument has always been the same. My only edge against the market is time. I don't believe that this is quote unquote the end of the Chinese economy. The unwinding is going to be slow, it's going to be painful, it's going to be arduous, but life goes on. I don't know when the deleveraging will end, but I know it will end and people will become hopeful again. In fact, it's because the sentiments are so bad that it gives me some sort of assurance that we are probably closer to the bottom than we think we are. So I have the patience to wait it out though. I'm not sure about you. Of course, many people will argue that there is no coming back for many of these Chinese companies. And that is exactly where we disagree. Qualitatively, I think there are a few catalysts that we can probably look forward to. First, there seem to be several hints where China is stepping in the direction of easing restrictions around COVID as they essentially cut their quarantine rules and there are 20 new guidelines for easing COVID zero. That said, I do know that there are still many instances where public officials come out addressing that they are sticking to zero COVID. So truth be told, many investors are confused as to what the real policy position is. Are we opening up or are we locking down? We shall keep our eyes peeled. Second, we have also seen major rounds of funding that seem to be targeted at supporting the broader economy. Essentially, they rolled out 1 trillion yuan in August to try to support the property developers. And the state-owned banks have recently just made it public on who and how much they are supporting. So this is in hopes of trying to unwind the repercussions and to bring back stability to the system. Third, the delisting concerns might finally come to an end as the US auditors from the PCOB has recently concluded their inspection of Chinese companies in Hong Kong and it was actually rumored to be ahead of schedule. So it can be interpreted both ways by the way, where it was either so smooth sailing that they ended early or it was so bad that they decided to end it early. So you pick your side. Quantitatively, in a recent article from Bloomberg Markets with the headline, Super rare signal suggests Hong Kong market has hit rock bottom. Long story short, they spotted an event that last happened 855 years ago, where a so-called crossover on a graph that combines the speed and magnitude of price changes to assess whether a security is about to make a big turn. So a very similar shift in 2009 marked the start of a multi-year bull run in the US. So for those of you who didn't understand what I just said, don't worry, you are not alone. 
so did I. Take it for what it's worth and don't put too much emphasis on it. But I thought it was quite interesting when you have these publications trying to call for the bottom as well. So they're stealing my limelight. Anyhow, do whatever you want. I'm basing my argument purely from what I observed and what I think. So not barring any black swan events, I do think that we are kind of bottoming out. Do feel free to leave in the comment section down below what you think. With that, I'll see you in the next video. But more importantly, I will see you on the moon. Goodbye.